By default, when you clone the repository for the first time, the master branch is cloned into the repository. You can see this by looking at this view within the Git repository that it's under this main branch, which is master. In Git best practices, before making any changes, you should make sure to create a branch and only make the changes into the branch so that you can put up a pull request that can be reviewed by others to be merged back to master. And how you would do that is within this Git repository view, you go to history for this master main branch. And then you'll see the latest branch here, the latest commit message, which is the initial commit. If you right click this, you can create a new branch. I'll call this branch comms call demo. You'll create it and it will tell SAS to create this branch for you. Now you'll see that it has automatically switched to that comms dash call dash demo. And the reason for that was because when I created that branch, there was that option which was to check out that branch automatically. If it doesn't change the branch to your current branch you just created, how you would do that would just be to go through this drop down and just jump to the new branch that you created. I'm doing that now. And now all of the changes that I make to the file are going to be within this branch. Here is where I start doing the development work. So I'm going to open this and I'll just view this you know, as a, as a text file. And let's say I make changes to this. Hello there. I am making my first change to this file as part of the comms call. I added to this existing text. From here, you can save it. If you are modifying a file that is not supported by SAS, so specifically this is readme.md file, that .md extension is not detectable by SAS. It's going to ask for where you actually want to save this. I'm going to save this as a new .txt file with that extension into the comms call demo repo. Save it. And now I'll see a new file has been created. Jumping back to the Git view for a particular repository, if you go to commit, you'll see that Git has detected that there have been changes within this repository. And the change was the new file that I created, which was the readme.txt. When I'm ready to save these changes and to save it to a particular commit, which is a version and a snapshot of this particular branch, in order to do that, once I get to this particular view, you'll need to add those files to be staged. Because readme.txt is an unstaged change here, you can click this button to add it to the particular commit. And then you'll see that now it's moved to the staged changes. Once it's been moved to the stage changes, you're ready to create your first commit. In order to do that, you'll need to create a commit message to describe all the changes. In this particular instance, there's only one file being committed, but typically a commit should represent changes to multiple files that represents some type of milestone. It could be I made changes or I refactored the workflow to optimize my SQL query for some part of my SAS program which may include changes to three particular files. That would be an example of committing those three changes to those files. And then in here in the commit comment, describing exactly what those changes across all those files represent. Because I added a new file as part of the commit message, added a new test file as part of the comms call demo. So this is my commit message. It's committed, and now you can also see the history. Go back to the history tab here. Now you've added this commit as part of this comms call dash demo branch. 